Hey Vlad here from DevInsider.com who welcome to another video in the book review series. Today we're reviewing a really cool one. Let's get right to it. Alright, I'm afraid I have to preface this video a little bit, so apologies for that, but I believe it's necessary. I'm recording this video at the end of 2021, and around 20 years ago, the Agile Manifesto was created by the people who really, and I mean really, cared about our industry. Unfortunately, over the years, the words have been twisted to the point that it is barely possible to use the word Agile without people giving you the yeah right look. Extreme Programming Explained, the first edition, came out in 1999 almost two years before the Agile Manifesto. In fact, many ideas of the Agile Manifesto can be traced back to this book, even though they might not have originated in it. And so what we're reviewing today is a vital historical contribution to our field. It's written by Kent Back, and if you've never heard about him, he's one of the fathers of modern software development. Many practices that you do in your day-to-day -day can be, in some way or the other, attributed back to him. We're talking about TDD, or even testing in general, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and even things like Kanban. The list goes on and on. And yet, we live in politically challenging times in which even our forefathers like Ken Bag, Uncle Bob Martin, or many others can be dragged through the mud because of a single tweet. And so, to conclude the preface to this video, we're not reviewing Ken Bag, we're not reviewing the Agile Manifesto, in fact, we're barely reviewing extreme programming itself. We're talking about the book about extreme programming, even though I admit it will be challenging to keep them apart. Anyway, let's get right to it. First and foremost, it came out in 1999 and the second edition came out five years later in 2004. It's very important to understand that we're reviewing the first edition because the second edition is a complete rewrite. It's like an entirely different book even though it's called the same. Both editions are very short. The number of pages grew from 190 to around 240. In fact, I read the first edition more than 10 years ago and I almost accidentally reread it in the preparation for this review because it's so short. I did not read the second edition because I just found out that it's a complete rewrite and so I decided not to get into it so that my thoughts are not intermixed. I'll try to read the second edition soon and make a review for you guys. No promises though because I might find it unnecessary if they're very similar. Make sure to follow me on social media since if these books end up being very similar I won't make a review and I'll simply tweet about it or something. Which reminds me this video is sponsored only by you or people like you so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my patrons. Thank you. As I already mentioned, the first edition is around 190 pages long and it's divided into three parts which contain 27 chapters in total. A cool thing to know is that there are many subsections and each of them is only a couple of pages long max which makes it very easy to read. I wish more books were like this. Now let's talk about the content and it's hard to talk about it without attempting to define XP or in fact the essence of software first. What makes software soft is the fact that it is easier to change than hardware. If you create software that is hard to change, well, I wouldn't call it wrong, but the argument could be made that you aren't really creating software. Over the path of his very long career, Ken Back found many problems with the software development process, both technical and non-technical. XP is his vision of how software should be developed, how software projects should be managed, what roles should be filled in a software team, both technical and non-technical as already mentioned, and many others. The book doesn't try to impose XP on you, and in fact it includes a couple of chapters about when not to use it. Alright, now what is XP? When I first heard this name, a certain image came to mind. An image of hacking all the time in a dark room while chugging energy drinks and not listening to the business folks. I'm glad to report that it has nothing to do with any of that. Over the years, many software development practices have crystallized and some of them are pretty much globally recognized as being good even though sometimes they're not practiced as often as they should be. For instance, even though something like TDD is somewhat controversial, testing itself is generally a well-accepted practice. Everyone can agree that tests are good and yet many software teams teams struggle with writing tests. Another example is code reviews. Even though everyone can agree that code reviews are good, many companies don't have a good review culture. So Kent took these and many other practices and asked himself the following question. If all of these practices are good, then what happens if we crank them all to the max? Or the word that he chose was to the extreme. He imagined the world in which we would 
take the time to practice all of these disciplines to the letter. If tests are important, then we will test all the time, hence TDD. If architecture is important, then we will refactor all the time, which is part of TDD. If code reviews are important, we will do them all the time, hence pair programming, another usually somewhat controversial practice, in fact, not only in the management circles. And so taking all of the accepted principles to the extreme is the origin of the name extreme programming. I wish it didn't contain the word programming in the title since a lot of practices and principles of XP are non-technical. However, even the non-technical activities are structured around programming. Programming is in the middle of it all, as it should be if you think about it. It's a software project. Of course it should be centered around programming. Now I won't go in depth about the content of the book, so let me sum it up real quick. As already mentioned, the book is divided into three parts. Number one, the problem, which was and unfortunately still is the status quo of the software development industry. Number two, the solution, which is, well, extreme programming. And number three, implementing XP, which attempts to give some practical advice on how to actually do it, how to integrate it into a non-XP project, when it works, when it doesn't, when to use it, when not to, etc, etc. Throughout the book, we're introduced to four values, five fundamental and five less critical principles, and of course, the infamous 12 practices of XP. Unfortunately, those practices, or even just the fact that there's 12 of them, is the only thing that people remember after reading this book. So unfortunately, XP is sometimes reduced to these 12 practices. All right, now let's get to the review portion. First about the book itself. It's short, the chapters are short, and the sections are short, which makes it very easy to digest and also to get somebody else to read it. The ideas and the intent are articulated clearly, and there is no doubt in my mind that a lot of care went into the creation of this book. I give it a solid 10 out of 10. As a reminder, the ranking is for the book, not for the XP methodology itself. Get it, read it, it's a super nice read. I'll let you know if it's worth getting the first edition once I've read the second one. Potentially not in a video though, so you might want to check out my other social media channels. The only caveat that you need to know about the book is the fact that some ideas are somewhat outdated. For instance, there's an idea that XP would only work for small teams, 10 people max. There's also an idea that it could only work with people in the same physical location. As a reminder, this book was written 20 years ago and technology has improved substantially since then. Remote work became possible, we have a lot of pair programming tools, our microphones, cameras, headphones improved so much that not only are we not at the same page as 20 years ago, we're not even in the same book. For instance, in XP, there would be a computer in the middle of the room with the latest version of your code base, and you would physically go there to integrate your changes. It was before continuous integration, before the cloud, before GitHub, before even Git. Seriously, even Google is only one year older than this book. We live in a different world now. Hopefully these things are improved in the second edition. Now let's talk about XP itself and I will try to focus on the negative parts. Even though XP itself offers some guidance on how to integrate itself into an existing project or how to implement those 12 practices, I found the methodology to be very idealistic. Now, I mean, personally, I like it since I'm an idealist myself. However, even now, 20 years later, we sometimes don't write tests, we sometimes don't review RPRs, we don't continuously integrate, we deploy once every couple of weeks or so, you get the idea. So XP didn't catch on, at least not massively, and it didn't catch on for a reason. And this reason is that XP is very fragile. Allow me to explain. This is very important because many other very important ideas, like functional programming, for instance, are plagued with the same problem. They're based on a hardcore discipline, and humans are just not good at it. Extreme things usually cannot be sustained for a prolonged period of time. For instance, a single mutation breaks the substitution model for procedure application, and our tools are just not good enough yet to catch it. A single person on the team who doesn't like XP or who does not extend XP or who doesn't agree with XP, for the lack of a better word, breaks it. And we live in a world where people rotate in and out of teams, switch companies all the time, and even C-level executives can change. Again, the book offers some guidance, but I've never seen it work in practice. And even if none of these were factors, requiring such a high degree of discipline is challenging to say the least. Now let me to give you an example by picking a random XP practice, collective ownership. I've seen the worst version of it where everyone had access to the code, but nobody, including me, would jump on the opportunity to fix a bug that 
they didn't introduce. And this is just a random example. I have dozens of them. Don't let me get started on things like testing or CI. One last thing that I would like to mention is the fact that the source of this methodology is a developer. Most managers don't buy dev books. And when I say buy, I mean it in all senses of the word. They don't believe in it. In fact, let me tell you a short story. The year was 2010 and I was an intern. My boss, I believe at the time his title was head of engineering or something similar, had many books laying around and since we were in the same room, I had access to them. As you can imagine, XP was one of them. Since we lived in the same neighborhood, he gave me a ride one day and I asked him what he thought of XP and I don't think that I will ever be able to forget his answer. He said, you know what? I'm not even sure that Kant was serious when he wrote it. Now, to be clear, I respected him and there was no snark in his statement. He genuinely could not believe that something like XP could work. Just FYI, at the time, he had around 70 devs under his command. So, I guess we can all agree that he knew what he was talking about. Now, these are the negative parts. The positive part is that I actually like XP and I wish that all developers would work in such an environment. It's good for the devs, it's good for the managers, it's good for the business people, and it's good for the business itself, which is what should matter the most. I'll be honest with you, I got goosebumps when I was rereading it for this review, but people just don't buy it. In fact, I actually tried it once. Let me tell you the story. It was uh, right after my internship semester, actually, because at the time I already, I already read this book and I also read uh, TDD by Ken Beck. And it was the sixth semester, I believe. And in the sixth semester, one of the main goals was to, uh, to have a full-blown project with like uh, five other students. I really wanted to try XP and TDD and, you know, testing in general. And so I chose the project that, you know, that was easy to test. It didn't have any database or nothing like that. It was a framework for uh, cryptography, basically for, uh, for education about cryptography. Essentially, we would run cryptographic algorithms, like very basic ones, and we would show each step, right? It was for education. Now, for those of you who haven't studied computer science, you need to know that not everybody in there actually wants to become a programmer or actually even likes programming. So in my team, there was one guy who was, you know, he was good in math but he didn't want to program uh, some other people you know I actually started computer networking not programming in any case the point is that they allowed me to leave because I really like programming and so they kind of listened to me and so before the project started we sat down in a room and I introduced them to XP and to TDD I said here's the thing we're gonna have a customer on site which is going to be this guy who is like really good at math but he doesn't want to program so he's not going to program but he's going to write tests I explained TDD to them you know we ran through a simple you know uh, stack example of TDD. I asked them to never program alone, to only program in pairs. And I have to admit that it was actually really, really awesome. We got it done really fast. We had almost 1000 unit tests and we got the best mark. But then later, once I've actually gotten into the industry, I've never seen it work again. If, uh, people don't like pair programming, people don't write tests. You know, I already said all of these things. All right, let's wrap this up. I hope that you enjoyed this review. I'll make sure to review the second edition if I deem it to be worthy or at least different enough for another video. Both of them are available on Amazon and if you're still here, you clearly like the video. So please don't forget to hit the like button. It helps out a ton. All right, I see you in the next one. And for now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to support tech education, please consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer. And let's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.